The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk. It's as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, the cheese food of Kraft. Quality. Well, it's dinner time at the great Gildersleeve's house. The water commissioner and his little family are gathered around the dining room table. Mmm, -mm, that smells good. Wonder what they're having. Uh, the rate Leroy is going, Marjorie and I aren't going to have anything. What an appetite. Leroy, where's the fire? I gotta hurry, Uncle. Only got one more day to eat in 1949. Yeah, one more day? Well, slow down, my boy. We may have a couple of meals around here in 1950, you know. Okay. Mm. There's a good New Year's resolution for Leroy. Have better table manners. Well, that's a capital idea, Marjorie. Yeah, well, Marge can make some resolutions, too. Since she got engaged to Bronco, she's goony. Leroy. I'm not paying any attention to him, Unky. No kidding, Unc. When she came downstairs this morning, I said, Hi, Marge. She didn't say anything. She kissed me on the forehead. Well, what's wrong with that? She got lipstick on me. Had to wash my face to get it off. <laughs> with soap. <laughs> what a calamity. Since she got engaged to Bronco, she acts like she's crazy or something. Now, well, Leroy, that's enough. And now, don't be angry with him, Unky. He's a sweet little brother. Hey, you see what I mean? <laughs> well, my boy, Marjorie's happy, that's all. Holy smoke, what'll it be like when she gets married? Yeah. More potatoes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, no, thank you, Bertie. I'm watching my waistline, you know. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve, a card came for you in the mail today. It's up on the mantel. Oh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Probably a Christmas card. Could be. <laughs> I think it's from Mr. Bullard across the street. Mr. Bullard? Guess he tried to beat old Santa Claus to the mailbox, but he didn't quite make it. And also, he didn't quite make it. Yeah. Just like Bullard, sending a Christmas card a week after Christmas. I bet he did it on purpose. He probably got yours, Unc. Then he had to send one to you. Well, I didn't send him one. I'll be very frank in saying, Leroy, that Mr. Bullard is not on my list of friends. Always bragging about the new garage he built for his Cadillac. Tss. Him and his overhead doors. The Bullards are giving a New Year's Eve party, Unky. Bronco and I are going. Oh? Yeah, they got the house decorated already. They're going to have funny hats and horns and everything. Hats and horns. Pooh. Well, you don't mind if we go, do you, Unky? Certainly not. You have nothing else to do. What are you doing tomorrow night? Me? Well, don't you worry. I'll have a very pleasant New Year's Eve. Fact of the matter is, I may give a party myself. No kidding, Unk? Bullard may have a corner on everything else, but by George, he doesn't know New Year's Eve. Oh, boy, can I be at the party, Unk? Can I, Unk? You bet you can, my boy. I'll have a real party with real friends and no stuffy old hats and horns either. I'll show that, Bullard. I'll do something original. We'll have a square dance or uh, maybe a hayride. Gee, a hayride would be swell, Unk. You betcha. A real old hayride with a horse and a sleigh and plenty of hay. Gee, that'll be keen. With jingle bells? Certainly. And can I drive the horse, Unc? Sure. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. I'll ask the Peavies, Floyd and his wife, Chief Gates, Judge Hooker, and, uh, of course, Katie Milford. Oh, it sounds like a lot of fun, Unky. Excuse me, children. Have to run over to Miss Milford's house. Got to get the invitations out. Mm -hmm. Hi, George. If Bullard thinks I'm going to pine away because he didn't ask me to his New Year's Eve party, he's got another think coming. Hey, ride. What an idea. Gildersleeve, you're clever. Well, Throckmorton. Ooh, hello, Catherine. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> Snowing outside. Uh-huh. 
I didn't expect to see you this evening. I was just getting ready to wash my hair. I look dreadful. No, you don't. With your hair all floating around like that, you look like a princess. Oh, Throckmorton. I'll bet it's naturally curly, too. <laughs> Would you like to sit down? Thank you. I've got some very exciting news for you, Catherine. A big New Year's Eve party tomorrow night. Yes, I know. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? It does. I'm awfully glad you're going, Throckmorton. I was afraid I wouldn't know anyone there except the hostess. Hostess? I rather thought you'd be going, though, since you live right across the street from the Bullards. Bullards? You mean you're going to the Bullards tomorrow night? Why, yes. Aren't you? Well, I guess I could have if he didn't... I mean, we're having a party at our house. Well, not in the house, exactly. I'm going to rent a horse. A horse? Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> we're going to have an old-fashioned hayride. You better tell Bullards you can't make it and come along. Oh, I couldn't do that. It'll be a dull party at Bullard's. Nothing but stale marshmallows and home movies. And there's nothing like a hayride with a bright moon and a slow horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go, Throckmorton, but I promised Mrs. Bullard. Yes, yes. Well, you'll be missing a fine hayride. We're going to have a lot of jolly people. I wish I could go with you, Throckmorton, but you know how it is with the Bullards. Yeah. Well... Yes, I'd better go. You're busy. No. No, I'm just going to wash the wave solution out of my hair. I wish I could wash Bullard out of mine. <laughs> Hi, Kamish. Oh, uh, hello, Floyd. Well, I'm right up in the chair. Just getting ready to close up. What'll it be, Kamish? A haircut? Getting kind of shaggy in the back. Yeah, well, just trim it up, Floyd. Yes, sir. The towel around you here now. I'm making the rounds today, Floyd. Lining up all my old friends for a big New Year's Eve party. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Old 1949's about washed up. Won't hurt my feelings none to see it go down the drain. Bend your head forward, Commish. Yeah, I'm giving a party tomorrow night, Floyd. Yeah, swell. New Year's Eve's a night for it, all right. Bullard was in the shop a while ago. Seems he's tossing a big wing ding at his house. Yeah, I've heard about it, Floyd. Me and the missus is going. What? Oh! Golly, Commish, you shouldn't jump when I got the clippers on you. You yanked out a little hair there. Floyd, you're not going to the Bullards. Why not? He asked me. A fine friend you are. I came in here to invite you to go to my house. Thought you'd come in for a haircut. Floyd, doesn't friendship mean anything to you? Huh? I'm giving a party tomorrow night. All the old crowd. I'm getting a horse and a sleigh. We're going to have a big hayride. Oh, no good, Commish. Lovey gets hay fever. Yeah. Besides, we're going to Bullard's. All right, go ahead. Hay fever. You'll just miss all the fun. Oh, I don't know. Kind of looking forward to a little hobnob with high society. I've always wanted to take a bite out of that upper crust. <laughs> upper crust. Besides, Mr. Bullard gets his hair cut here, too, you know. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. I'll simply strike your name from the guest list, that's all. What's a guest list? The people who are coming to my party. Who are they? Never mind. Oh. There are plenty of people coming. Big people. Well, got to be going, Floyd. I hope you have a good time at the Bullards. Hey, wait, Commissioner. Never mind finishing the haircut, Floyd. Oh, I don't care about that. You're walking out with my towel. Yep. <laughs> What can I do for you this evening? Well, I'm having my troubles, Peavy. Hmm, too bad. Thank goodness there's one person in this town I can count on. Who's that? You. Oh? The way your friends let you down when you need them. It's a sad thing, Peavy. Floyd, Chief <coughs> Gates. Uh... Short of money, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Short of money? What gave you that idea? Well, when a man comes in with half a haircut, you can't help but wonder. <laughs> I forgot all about that. I thought perhaps you'd gone into Floyd's shop and ordered a quarter's worth. No, Peavy. Or possibly that Floyd was doing his barbering on a piecework basis. So much per hair. Yes. Well, I thought that was rather amusing. So much per hair. Well, I'm in no mood to be amused, Peavy. I'm giving a big party, and you're invited. Oh, thank you. Uh, any special time? Tomorrow night, Peavy, New Year's Eve. 
Oh, sorry, I can't make it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy and I are going to the Bullards. No, Peavy, not you, too. Yes, Mrs. Peavy's quite elated about it. In fact, she's making a new dress for the occasion. Glazed chintz, I believe it is. <laughs> but, Peavy, I'm going to have a hayride with a horse and a sleigh and everything. Surely you'd rather go on a hayride with Mrs. Peavy than get lost in that mob at Bullard's house. Well, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should have known. Oh, here's the judge. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Judge. Hello, Horace. Well, what happened, Gildy? Did the barber shop catch fire? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Judge. Uh, what are you doing New Year's Eve, Judge? Not a thing, Peavy. I was invited to Bullard's residence, but I dislike stuffy, crowded rooms, so I declined. Good for you, Horace. Mr. Gildersleeve here is having a hayride tomorrow night. A hayride? Now, wait a minute. If nobody's coming... Were you planning to invite me, Gildy? Certainly, Horace. But... I accept the invitation. Um... I'm extremely fond of hayrides. Do you have a sleigh? No, and I don't think... Then I'll arrange for the sleigh. Orrin Fetzler has a crackerjack behind his garage. A huge one. Uh... How about a horse? We'll have to have a horse, Gildy. Yes. We can borrow Frank Pittman's. Her name is Pearl. A wonderful snow horse. Frank used her on his ice wagon. But, Judge... And we'll need hay, Gildy. I should say approximately five bales. I'll arrange for the hay. I think this is going to be the most enjoyable New Year's Eve, Gildy. A merry group of voices raised in song and laughter. Who's going, Gildy? You and I and Leroy. <laughs> More about Gildy's New Year's Eve plans in just a minute. When it comes to making New Year's resolutions, I'd like to make a suggestion for you homemakers. Why don't you resolve to keep a two-pound loaf of Velveeta on hand all the time? Because Kraft's famous cheese food can help you so many different ways. You see, Velveeta can help you when you need quick and easy snacks, hearty, good-eating lunchbox sandwiches, and a variety of hot dishes, too. Yes, you can melt golden Velveeta for a smooth sauce that'll give even leftover ham or veal or turkey or fish or vegetables new goodness. Smooth melting Velveeta gives them such a grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And this good eating Velveeta sauce is easy to make. Just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Then gradually stir in one quarter cup of milk. Season to taste, and presto, you'll have a grand-tasting, wholesome cheese sauce that'll help you solve many problems all through the new year. When you shop, get Kraft's smooth-melting cheese food in the economical two-pound loaf, so there'll be plenty on hand for snacks and sandwiches and grand cheese sauce dishes, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. the great Gildersleeve's plans for a big hayride New Year's Eve seem to have gone a little sour. Most everybody is going to Mr. Bullard's party. Everybody, that is, except the water commissioner, Judge Hooker, and little Leroy. They're going on the hayride. A uh, fine hayride. A horse in the front and an old goat in the back. <laughs> what a New Year's Eve. That Bullard invited everybody else in town, practically. Well... Isn't bothering me any. <laughs> Wouldn't have gone to his old party if he'd invited me. Oof, here comes Bullard now. Wonder if he planned to invite me and it slipped his mind. Could happen. After all, none of us is perfect. I'll bet that's what happened. Well, hello, Bullard. Good morning, Gildersleeve. Nice morning. Yes, it is. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a nice New Year's Eve, too. <laughs> yes, I believe it will. Have a pleasant Christmas, did you? Oh, yes, yes. Fine Christmas. I'm looking forward to New Year's Eve, though. <laughs> That's tonight. Yes, it is. <laughs> I hear you're planning to give the little baby New Year a festive welcome. Oh, yes, yes. We're sort of opening up the house this evening. We expect it to be a rather jolly affair. 
Well, uh, having a lot of people, I presume. Yes, yes, I think I've invited about everybody in town. Except, of course, for the undesirable. Zeke. <laughs> I, uh, I had to overlook a few of the less savory members of our community. Mrs. Bullard doesn't like to take chances with her silver. Mm. <laughs> well, I must be on my way. Good day, Gildersleeve. Uh, good day. <laughs> I don't know. What's wrong, Uncle Moore? That Bullard. Marjorie, I'd rather you and Bronco didn't go over there tonight. Well, why not, Uncle? I don't want any of my family in that house, not even on that side of the street. What I'd give to turn off his water. <laughs> Bullard and his copper pipes. Now, Uncle Mort, if all this is because he didn't ask you over... That's not the reason. Well, what is the reason? I simply want nothing to do with any of the Bullards. That's the reason. There's some people in this world who just have no business being people. If I didn't own this house, I'd move. I wouldn't even live in the same block with the Bullards. Not even in the same town. Now, Uncle, you just feel that way now. Tomorrow you'll forget all about it. Oh, no, I won't. I've seen you go through these things before. One minute you can't stand Mr. Bullard, and the next minute you want to be friends. You've been going on like this for years, Uncle Mort. Well, it's not going on anymore. This is the end. I know. You've said that before, too. Maybe I have, but this time I mean it. I'm making a New Year's resolution. From now on, I'm having absolutely nothing to do with Bullard. I'm all through with him. I'm washed up. I mean, he's washed up. <laughs> all right, Uncle. We'll see. You'll see, all right. He's off my list once and for all. Don't want to even see his face. Just wait till the next time he backs his fat Cadillac over our curb. I'll tell him a thing or two. You home, Mr. Gilsleeve? Yeah, you bet I'm home, Bertie. Here's the card that came for you yesterday. I'm cleaning off the mantle. Uh -huh. From Bullard, huh? I ought to send it back to him. I ought to fill the envelope full of termites and slip it under his house. <laughs> what is it, Anki? A Christmas card? Wait a minute. What's this? Dear Mr. Gildersleeve, we are having a few friends in New Year's Eve. We hope you'll be able to join us. Cordially yours, Rumps and Bullard. Oh, yes, your invitation to the party. Must be a mistake. No, you see, it was mailed three days ago. Well. You see, Uncle Mort, I told you that was the reason you were angry with Mr. Bullard. Now you'll change right back again. The invitation had nothing to do with it. Of course, if they've asked me to come. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort, I can see right through you. Oh, no, you can't. Hi, Uncle, what time do we start on the hayride? Well, uh, Leroy, I, I... think Uncle Mort's changed his mind about the hayride. He's invited over to the Bullards. Oh, you going over there? Well, you see, Leroy... Everything's all right now. Unky has an invitation. Marjorie, that's not it at all. It's simply when a person asks you to his home... You promised to take me on a hayride! Oh, Leroy! <laughs> you said you weren't going to go to the Bullards. You said we were going on a hayride! <laughs> Really nothing, Bertie. It'll all blow over in a minute. The heck of will you promise I can go on a hayride? Oh, but please, Leroy. Well, ain't you going on a hayride, Miss Gilkley? Well, Bertie, He's I... going to the Bullards! <laughs> Who said I was going to the Bullards, for heaven's sake? Oh, boy, then it's okay for the hayride? <laughs> Leroy, I couldn't get anybody to go along. Just Judge Hooker. We can't have a hayride with three people. Why not? That's all the more hay for us. <laughs> well, I got to know if you're going hayriding. I'm putting up the lunch, Mr. Gillsleeve. If you're not going hayriding, ain't no need of putting up no lunch. Sure we're going. Unc said we were, didn't you, Unc? I didn't say anything. Yes, you did! <laughs> I just want to know that's all one way or the other. Bertie ain't got no crystal ball out there in that kitchen. If I'm going to put up a lunch, I got to know. You better decide what you're going to do, Unky. You said we were going! Oh, no, that's all one way or the other. If I'm going to put up the lunch, I got to know. All right, for heaven's sake, we'll go on the hayride. Really, Unk? Yes, really. There, now, you see, Leroy, all that hollering was for nothing. Oh, no, it wasn't. I nearly lost. <laughs> going on the hayride, Mr. Gilsey? <coughs> Three, Bertie. Leroy, Judge Hooker, and I. Nobody else? No, Bertie. <laughs> You're going to have to get the horse in with you to keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got 
gotta go get my coat on. Bronco will be here any minute. This is gonna be a swell hayride, isn't it, Uncle? No girls. Yeah, some hayride. I sure feel sorry for those guys over at Bullard's house. Nothing to do but dance with girls. They'll sure envy us. We'll have a horse. <laughs> I'm sure proud of you, Unc. When you say you'll do something, you stick to it. Yes, yeah. And you don't change your mind, either. Leroy, you've got this thing in the bag. You don't have to put a double knot on it. <laughs> hey, Unc, look out in front. We got a horse and a sleigh. Yeah, Judge Hooker. Come in, Judge. Greetings, Gildy. And greetings to you, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Well, darn your gay apparel, Gildy. I've got the sleigh and the hay, and good old Pearl is chomping at the bit. All right, Judge. I was a little late. Pearl insisted on bringing me here by the long way around. She had to follow Frank Pittman's ice route. <laughs> hey, Judge, can I drive the horse? Certainly, Leroy. You can sit on my lap and hold the reins. But let's be on our way. The moon is already high in the sky. Moon? Uh, I'll get my coat and be right with you, Horace. New Year's Eve. Everybody over at Bullard's. Music, food, Catherine. She'll probably be more beautiful than ever before. Where'll I be? Sitting on a pile of hay with Judge Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing my ears off. Why can't I keep my big mouth shut? Well, it's too late now, Gildersleeve. You've made your little bed. Now lie in it. Nice bed full of hay. Hurry up, Gildy. The old year's fading fast. Wish I could fade with it. Coming, Horace. Are you all ready, Gildy? Eh, guess so, Judge. I'm all set. What's in that box you're carrying? Oatmeal for the horse. He's got to have a little fun, too. Yes. Leroy, it's a she-horse. He-horse, she-horse. Let's get going. <laughs> it's lunch, Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't forget your lunch. Good evening, Bertie. Good evening, Judge. It's sure a mighty fine night for a hayride. Yes, sir. It's a perfect night for a hayride, Bertie. And the way I feel right now, we may go flying off across the snow into the star-filled night away to some mystic fairyland in the enchanted forest. Old Mother Goose. <laughs> Come on, Horace Yeah, let's go By the way, Gilday, where's Marjorie? Marjorie went to Bullard's party with Bronco How unfortunate She doesn't know what she's missing not going with us Have a good time Don't tip over in the snow Don't you worry, Bertie I'm an expert horse driver Yeah, so long, Bertie Have a good time, Mr. Gill, please <laughs> <laughs> Boy, look, Unc, what a keen horse. Uh, hello, horsey. <laughs> Pearl sags in the middle. <laughs> She's a noble animal, Gildy. Once out in the open country, she'll fairly fly. Yeah, well, let's get aboard and fly. Climb up, Leroy. I'm up here. Uh -huh. Oh, boy, plenty of hay. That moon you mentioned isn't very bright, Horace. How are we going to see anything? Don't you worry, Gildy. Pearl can see. She's full of carrots. Yeah. <laughs> now let's mount to the driver's seat <laughs> There, isn't this delightful, Gildy? Like sitting on a throne Seats full of splinters Gee, this is keen We can all sit up here and drive Isn't anybody gonna sit in the hay? Well, we can take turns, Gildy One of us will drive while the others sit in the hay uh -huh. Are we all ready? Sure, give her the gas New Year's Eve Bullard's house all lighted up. Never felt so lonely in all my life. Hey, come in. Fire up that nag and let's get down the road. Okay. Who said that? Why, well, that sounded to me like Floyd. What? <laughs> what? Hey, what's going on? Somebody giggled. Gildersleeve, are we going to sit here all night? Hey, that was Bullard. Gildy, there are people in our hay. Huh? <laughs> Happy New Year, Unky. Marjorie. Holy smokes. Hiya, fellas. Fly. Good evening, gentlemen. And Peavy. What's going on here? And Mrs. Peavy. Well, now, it's quite simple, Gildersleeve. Marjorie explained that you wanted us to go with you, so I moved the whole party out here. Well, great. It's quite a novel idea, starting the party off with an informal hayride. 
I think we'll enjoy it immensely. You bet. Where's Catherine? Right here, Throckmorton. <laughs> yeah, I can't see you. Uh, I'll just follow your perfume. Right. <laughs> Move over, everybody. Give me some hay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, Look out, I'm coming back there, too. Uh, careful, boy. Leroy. Well, I'm certainly not going to sit up on this seat alone. Make room for a judge. All right. <laughs> Say, isn't this fun? It's perfect. Gildas Leaf, this was a superb idea. Well, thank you, Bullard. Old friend. Wait, we're moving. I hear Bell. Yeah, hold on. Who's driving this thing? Yeah, Pearl Chigley. <laughs> Good old TV. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. You mothers know that in 1950, there'll be many a raid on that refrigerator of yours, so be prepared. Make sure it holds a two-pound loaf of Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. Mmm, mmm, because golden Velveeta is such good eating with its grand, rich-tasting, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And you know the folks can enjoy Velveeta snacks anytime because Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself and really nourishing. For instance, it helps supply protein for strong muscles, minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, vitamins needed for normal growth. You see, Velveeta helps supply many important food values from milk. So whether you spread that Velveeta on crackers or cut hearty slices for sandwiches, you can be sure Velveeta snacks are good for the family and so good to eat. Get genuine Velveeta tomorrow. It's the cheese food of Kraft quality. <laughs> This is some hayride, just like the good old days. I told you Pearl was a fine horse, Gildy. Eh? We're fairly zipping along. I've never had so much fun. I should have brought my clippers along. This hay needs trimming. Yeah. Move over, Floyd. Stop pushing. I'm not pushing. we got a load on this yeah. leg. Sure, the more the merrier. <laughs> Can't move. Neither can I. I'm trapped. That's me, just an old trapper. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Gildersleeve. Uh, what is it, Bullard? Will you scratch the end of my nose? Sure, but I can't see anything. Uh, yeah. Gildy, that's my nose. <laughs> I thought it felt like an old goat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Uncle Mr. Bullard's still off your list of friends. Uh, Leroy, in the new year, things are going to be different, eh, Bullard? <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, Gildersleeve, you're not as big an oaf as I thought you were. Oh, Bullard, I... Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food, is offering you a knife of a hundred uses, the Super Slicer. It pairs faster, slices cleaner, removes olives and cherries from bottles in a jiffy. It's the handiest kitchen knife in years. And you can get this knife for only 25 cents on the top label of a round package of delicious Pabstet cheese food or the Red Arrow from the top of a two-pound Pabstet loaf. Send your Pabstet label and your quarter tonight to Phoenix Pabstet, Box 5239, Chicago, 77, Illinois. Please print your return address. This offer expires January 31st, 1950. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.